Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. It's my great pleasure to be here, and thanks to the organizer for this kind of help. Uh, today, I want to talk about uh, the accelerated uh, uh, gradient flow, about uh, accelerated information in gradient flow. Uh, this is a joint work with my one well, of my visiting students, uh, if you want. So uh, at the beginning, I want to give you a very or, uh, broader interview, a broader uh, overview of this uh, topic. So we are talking about the uh, details and the optimization relations. So from this uh, nice figure, we can see at the beginning, once we have two probability distributions, or we have some data, so we want to compare them. We have many uh, different choices of details function to start with. You can start the Euclidean details, can study the so-called uh, Manhattan distance, you can start the so-called remaining distance, so on and so forth. On, the, on this part, the statistics, they consider a very important distance so-called entropy, a relative entropy, uh, or the KL divert, the kubeck leibniz divergence function. So this is the other way to measure the closeness between two set of points or two probability identities. And, uh, this thing is generalized in many areas, and in, in particular, so there's a one area, so-called information geometry. The, their goal is to generalize different type of uh, divergence functions and try to study their properties. Now, what do we do today? What do we do with the here? We can use the so-called earth mover distance, or people also call it the optimal transport, or, or transport-like type of details, we want to put it into this framework to say what happens and what can we do for this uh, in this area, in this information science. Now, why we can see this divergence function or uh, 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 all these kind of details functions here? Uh, application of divergence is very, very huge. Actually, almost every science you need to compare uh, two data or two distributions. So, I mean, I mean, in the recent years, I mean, the most uh, advanced technique coming from the machine learning and uh, deep learning, and so on and so forth. So, for example, the AlphaGo is kind of a safer learning. Again, here you need some, uh, create some uh, reward function or sometimes something like control formulation coming from this uh, uh, information science. Oh, you can also consider so-called deep learning and the GAN. Basically, you can see that the uh, the GAN means the generative adversary networks, and actually our UCLA group are very active on this recently. So this is a way of using this kind of uh, primal or dual formulation behind this details. Basically, it's a simplified structure. You use the primal variable and dual variable and do this kind of calculation. Oh, in physics and in many other areas, the protein folding is like a, a way of uh, kind of uh, we represent uh, dynamics in physics. In the end, when once you, you in the end once you understand this dynamics again, you have to understand how it's kind of like entropy, kind of, uh, and they are doing decreasing on their suitable details functions. So it's still coming from this picture. But today we have some focus. We focus on so-called Bayesian sampling problem. The sampling means I I know a target distribution. I want to find a sampling efficient way to end up with my target uh, function. So here again, there are many different choices. People can say, I, I, can, I can create a neural network, I, I can create a probability model, I will only work on parameter space. Or traditionally, we can also, starting from the internet dimensional, we do the model free setting. And today, we do the model free setting. And we try to see what happens. Again, once we can do model free setting, the same technique can also apply to the uh, model setting, similarly. Now, what is the Bayesian inference? It is a very, very powerful, powerful tool in modeling complex data to do the quantifying uncertainties. I mean, many areas like inverse problem, information science, physics, so on and so forth. So I think uh, uh, at the beginning of the talk, we are, uh, beginning of the talks, we talk a lot of application to this uh, Bayesian sampling or Bayesian inference problems. Here, the main problem is as follows. So given a priori distribution, we want to generate samples from a posterior distributions. So basically, I want to sample the row star. Row star is given by e to negative f. It kind of gives a measure. I know my function f. Now the question is like, how can we find samples which according to the distribution like this? 
Okay. Now, one of the classical way is so called large event dynamics. Uh, people also call it overdamped large event dynamics. It means we consider the gradient of the function, negative gradient of function, plus the square root of two times the Brownian motion, and use the dxt equals this. It is a very classical stochastic differential equations with the gradient drift function. Uh, now why is this kind of dynamics is useful? And of course, in practice, we also work on discrete status, but let's focus on continuous sample space, make everything simple to illustrate at the, at the beginning. Now, now, look at this dynamics. Why we, we care about this dynamics? And what can we do? What can we say from this sampling problem, right? In the end, we want E to negative F. Now, let's look at this dynamics. So in other words, we look at this probability uh, transition equation. So in other words, we rewrite this SD in terms of the so-called focal plot equation by using the Kerman log, log forward operator. So if I represent XT by its, uh, uh, its probability diffusion function and I write down this uh, evolution equation, it is the so-called focal plot equation. Now, in the end, let's say, let's say when T goes to infinity and uh, suppose uh, my partial t rho equals zero, which means I end up at the invariant measure at the, uh, uh, when partial t rho equals zero, then we see this elliptical operator and we find this, we gain this for the following uh, diffusion function. It is the Gibbs measure, okay? With k to be the normalization constant. Now, now what does this dynamics mean? Actually, we can look at it from the optimization angle in the probability space. So in other words, in other words, we consider the, we, we consider the uh, following optimization problem. We minimize the density function with a suitable energy function, where uh, P omega is equal to the following, the integration of rho equals y, rho is non-active. There are many choices of E, in particular, we look at the key of divergence, okay? So if I look at the row log row over e to f, if I'm seeing this optimization problem, I know my minimizer is h, row is parallel to e to negative f, which means, so if I'm looking at this sampling problem, we have two way points, one is like we directly write down some equations and it's even to measure in the end, it will end at this point. Or I look at the optimization problem, and if I'm still the best row according to this problem, I will end up just uh, the minimizer, the best row give us the uh, e to negative f, which is the, the thing we want. Okay. Now you ask a question like, what's the relation between <laughs> this optimization and this dynamics, right? Either this one or this one. Now the answer is following. There is the following relation, the relation coming from the so-called information matrix. So we have we need to, to answer the optimization side from this problem. So what is the so what is the so-called information matrix? Okay, information matrix are very fancy names which I like to call them, but essentially it means the so-called Weierstrass matrix or the fisher row matrix from the literature. Okay, the fisher row matrix is a study coming from the so-called information geometry. It is very popular in AI, actually. Nowadays, everything is facial information metrics, if you heard from the uh, yesterday's talk. So-called facial information statistics. Uh, I mean, there are many experts there, Amari, Nihai, and John, and also many big shots in statistics and the learning are working on this. The other thing is so-called AI inference problem, which means you consider the different divergence function, F divergence, Amari alpha divergence, they have a dictionary to build divergence functions, which give you the suitable properties. So basically, if you look at this figure, all this thing here is coming from this different, different property of divergence functions. So it's very powerful in machine learning. You, you definitely, you, you will partially use them. Now, the third thing here is so-called AI optimization methods. Okay, optimization is a very long topic. So in particular, I'm talking about the so-called natural gradient. A natural gradient, I mean, natural gradient means it's like a constraint gradient using the Fisher metric. 
Amari is a big shot there. And, so called, and the other area is called stochastic relaxation. Pistoni and the Maligo are experts here. So there are many different uh, modifications of this AI optimization method. Even the more popular item in, to choose in step size is a, a way to approximate this natural gradient. At least at, the motivation is like this, but so in the end, it can be something else. So it's a very active uh, research area. Now we talk about the other side. The other metric, interesting metric, information metrics, is so called optimal transport. So the gradient descent method there is super popular. I, I, so like the experts like uh, Jordan, Kendale, Otto, Valani, a special of uh, Jose, Carrillo, and Kansas, and Wang Li, and uh, Kathy Craig. And actually, we have uh, many, many experts working on this gradient descent methods. And it's also very successful in modeling social life and uh, in the computing of the uh, partial differential equations. So in applied math, the optimal transport is super popular. Uh, like, you know, the UCLA group is probably uh, a Professor Osher and uh, Bray and Justin Salomon and, and like Adam Oberman and uh, by the more Brunier, even like uh, the Inquist uh, and uh, Yuna Yang and uh, my advisor like Homing and uh, Andrew Sturt and uh, what all, we, we all work in this area, like doing inverse problem, doing the scientific computing, doing the modeling. So it's very successful. In engineering, we don't need, needless to say, like it's super popular right now, like Yongxin, Prevon, and Giorgio, Talibam, Haider, and uh, Amir, we, we are all working on this area. It's, it's in modeling different problems. But in AI, recently it become, it's catching up, and like the Kuchuri and uh, Protener and Bartonneau, and Yo, even Yo, uh, Professor Yo and uh, Gu, they have a lot of interesting work there. And in statistics, like similarly, you can do the Western type of information in statistics, like Amari, Peters, and Mueller, and myself, and Gyuju, and Jia Qi Zhao, we are also working on this area. So these two information metrics is so far are popular. Now my goal here is like, we want to create uh, optimization using the information metrics. So here we only focus on the optimization methods, okay? So long story short, I, I give, directly give you some dynamics to, to talk about Then later on I create some uh, interesting authoritative dynamics for us to discuss. So uh, yeah, very, very abstract way, the gradient flow means the following. So giving you some energy E coming from property space in some, uh, with some metric. The gradient flow means you consider a metric inverse times the differential of it. This is L2 differential. It's like including gradient on row and you time some positive definite operators, like a preconditional if you want to call it from optimization. Now, there are two different examples of this preconditional. Number one, it's like, oh, why don't we compute the Hessian of this energy? In the, in the case of KL, the Hessian metric in L2 sense is so-called the Fisher row gradient, the Fisher row metric. The Fisher row is very simple, just like a row, okay? times the differential of this, if I do in KL, it's a log row plus F, okay? So it's a row times something, it's my feature row gradient. People also call natural gradient, so on and so forth. <clears throat> now, for the versus thing, it's, uh, for this, uh, the other information metric we're considering, it's the versus the metric. Now, this thing is also interesting. The versus thing gradient flow of KL forms the so-called the Planck equation by the following logic. So I will give a detail later, but very abstractly speaking, the, the metric here is the metric inverse, it is a divergence row gradient, and the differential become f plus log rho, it doesn't change. And uh, if you cal calculate this thing out, you find this divergence row gradient f, and divergence row gradient log rho, gradient log rho times rho give you gradient rho, divergence on gradient rho give you the Laplacian. This is a very, very interesting, Logic, actually, if you know this picture, this gradient log row times row equals gradient row is a super popular uh, property in box cox transformation and in a lot of uh, interesting statistical learning purposes. And uh, in particular in dynamics, it gives you the, the heat equation. It gives us the focal plan equation. Okay, so for this kind of gradient flows, and in particular, we focus on Weisselstein, we look at what can we say here? 
the grid flow of KO divergence is for Planck equation. Let's, let's look at more of this. So this is so-called, I call it the tail of a brown motion, a tail of brown motion. So there's some story behind this nice property here, which is coming from as early as 1966. He's uh, Edward Niels is the first guy working on this kind of trick. His goal is to derive the Schrodinger equation, the quantum mechanics. Now let's look at the following fact. In dense space, we look at this kind of fact: double the row gradient f plus plus row. Now let's look at the, at the sample space or the past space. What can we see? Now, large event dynamics we understand very well. It is like dxt equal negative uh, uh, xt plus square root of bt. But if you use this, this kind of western gradient viewpoint, it is average the row gradient. This is a continuity equation, right? So we know it uh, very well. For continuity equation, if you write into Lagrangian formulation, it also means dxt minus gradient fxt minus gradient log row tx. Okay, this is a very formal writing. It just means, for, so this row means uh, my each particle, it creates a flow map and acts according to this log. It's a kind of a mean field idea inside. So, sorry to interrupt. There's a question from Dima in the chat. Okay. Yes. I, I can just ask it. In in your previous yes. slide, it's very stupid. Why do your PDEs do not uh, involve rho star? Oh, oh sorry. I'm so sorry. Rho star is e to negative f. Uh, uh, this is rho star. Ah, okay. So, okay, so the log uh, rho star is negative f. So <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks. So, yeah, yeah, if I write the log row star, so everything in log. A very good question, yes. Okay, so I'm here. So, so in other words, at least there are three viewpoints for the brown motion. You can look at the past space using the square of the brown motion. And in this space, it's Laplace, it is the very well known operator. And also in sample space, in diffeomorphism space, it's a gradient of a log. Okay. Now, in fact, actually, this kind of three viewpoint, people use it, uh, I mean, everywhere, and also in this AI first order algorithms. So basically speaking, I, I just give you some uh, introduction here, no, no details. So there are many vast sampling ag algorithms like using these properties. For example, people in the STEM metric of STEM version of derivative. The STEM is uh, also a big shot in the statistics. It creates a way to including the kernel into your diffeomorphism. In other words, he's playing with this quantity. Here is a kernel here. And he creates the so-called the Stein version of gradient. Okay? And this is the, you take the average on, on some kernel given k the matrix kernel function, you work on gradient at y, and you modify the gradient log row, play the trick here, the gradient log row times the row equals the gradient row, and you take it in the alpha. This is a new Stein diffusion process. Uh, this is very popular recently. I think like uh, Liu Qian and uh, Wang, he, he worked on this very nicely. And uh, also in the so-called Western Kalman metric and the example Kalman sampling. So in other words, this is a wide use the algorithm in this inverse problem. He also gives us kind of like uh, larger one dynamics coming from this, this side. He, we model this thing, we intentionally create a mean field commerce matrix to preconditioning my, uh, my large amount dynamics. Of course, you can go back to my figure here, the tail running motion to write all the formulations. But essentially speaking, we, we do preconditioning, we, we change a different uh, metric operator. And here, zero is the so called covariance matrix operator. It's a mean field type of covariance operator. So, in other words, all these kind of pop, uh, formulations are very like this one because my particle, when I move, it, my motion depends on my neighborhood. It depends on my identities. So it's kind of mean field evolutionary dynamics. So actually, you know, the other, the other advertisement, in UCLA are working on mean field games. Everything, it is a particular mean field games, also in this case. So let me tell you what happens in this AI literature. So the KL divergence plus the versus the metric, plus gradient descent, equals the so-called larger dynamics in the dentist space. And it's uh, optimal transport, Jordan, Kendler, Otto, Malani, so on and so forth. This is a very popular, a very big uh, topic in optimal transport. KL diverges plus Fisher-Raw metric plus gradient descent 
people call it the burst burst dynamics. It's a very popular in information geometry. It's a natural gradient, and this is so-called the Amari ETL. We they are we are capable of working on this area. KL divergence plus time metric plus green design gradient descent. It's the so-called time inversion or gradient descent. Okay. Now the KL divergence plus the than KL metric plus green descent equal the symbol Kelman sampling. So this list is very, very long. You can precondition like you can create a metric to work on your purpose and to talk about its properties. Now, my question is the following in this talk. So for what kind of divergence function? Divergence means our objective function in your being property space, plus whatever metric we are interested, plus something more interesting uh, optimization technique which means a series of gradient descent, or Newton's dynamics, or even you know, more general optimization techniques, what happens? So this is the goal. <clears throat> so can we desi design a systematic accelerated gradient flows for samplings, which apply the simplistic structures in information metrics? So once you have a metric, what, is, what do we mean by metric? A metric means you have a Hamiltonian structure to play with. Okay, I mean, of, of course, like Manhattan is L1 Hamiltonian, like the, uh, Euclidean is L2 or Hamiltonian. The Hamiltonian depends on some state variable, it's more interesting, right? It's kind of like remaining or sub remaining, whatever. I mean, this is like different Hamiltonian we are interested about. Now, so extending from the facts and open transport gradient flow of KL divergence from the so called Lagrangian dynamics, what are accelerated gradient flows look like? And what is a generalized accelerated Lagrangian dynamics? Okay. So actually, this is uh, not uh, somehow we are not that new in this field because this in finite dimensional people understand this very deeply and they have a lot of uh, interesting results already and are somehow very deep. So like in clean space, the SU ETL they have they write down this nice uh, authority dynamics and the Winslow virus and uh, uh, Michael Jordan they have a very nice version of formulation and also people also write into the Hamiltonian system. Like you know, the medicine, protein test, and uh, uh, Doningo and uh, docent, they have a very nice Hamiltonian way to represent this authority green flow. It also, I mean, of course, this is the Eula, Eula, uh, Lagrangian part. This is like Hamiltonian formula, formula to this to this problem. In the density space, in the probability measures in, for the sampling. People also consider the similar problem, like the uh, Liu, uh, Liu ETL and uh, uh, Amir and uh, Meta, they, they also consider the certain flows from optimal control perspective. And Jose, even, I mean, Jose, I also have a paper. I just talked with Jose last time when I gave a talk. He told me, oh, look, I also work on this problem similarly. And I look at it, yes. In the in last year, actually, he studied the so called compressible OLA equation with the damping, with the linear damping. And this is also come back to this problem. But again, it's we, depending on which Hamiltonian we work on, we have different interesting dynamics. As all the chain ETL and the my ETL, they consider the so-called un underdamped Lagrangian dynamics. So, but here I want to say the certain flows, if you want to create from metric stru Hamiltonian structures, it's different from you. We directly know what is dynamics look like. Okay, what is so? What I'm saying here is a certain Lagrangian dynamics may not same as the classic, classical underdamped Lagrange dynamics. I will tell you later. <laughs> okay, the gradient flow, what is the gradient flow? Gradient flow means you want to minimize some, let's, let's work on Euclidean first, then we just apply all the logic from Euclidean to the infinite dimensional and work on a particular Hamiltonian system we are interested in. So we minimize x in Rn of fx, <coughs> The classical uh, gradient descent means uh, xk plus one equals xk minus s uh, step size times gradient fxk. So it can be formulated as a continuous uh, time gradient flow, which means x dot uh, equals negative gradient fx. Okay. Now, a third the gradient flow means the following. There are many different ways. I, I also I remember like. Yeah, Alberman is nice paper. He also have the other formulations. But the, the, let's do something simple first. So the, the classical one, it is x double dot plus alpha t, x dot plus green f. Okay, this is the, the 
uh, alpha t can be to the different uh, coefficient that depend on the property of uh, f. Now this is a kind of like a write down the Euler, Euler, uh, Euler Lagrange equation. You can also write it into the Hamiltonian system. The Hamiltonian system means following. You consider a very classical uh, Hamiltonian function when when half p squared plus f x, and you consider the Hamiltonian flow, which x dot equals uh, green p at p dot equal that to green x. Now, what does this alpha t x dot mean? It is a very very particular linear damping. I want to emphasize this: a linear damping working on this momentum variable. Okay, so once you have a Hamiltonian structure, you know what is your momentum variable. You write down your Hamiltonian system and you add the length of linear damping into your system. That's a certain green flows. People will ask, can I do any Hamiltonian system add to any linear any damping? Yes, you can, but for at least for the current knowing measured here with nice properties, it is a linear damping. It's, it's uh, somehow very simple in dynamic system, but it has a very powerful you know, convergence uh, guarantees. Okay, so it's a linear damped Hamiltonian system equals a certain gradient flux. Now you will ask, can we extend this to the infinite dimensional space, especially for this, you know, for the dentist space? Then I write uh, the mean field particle evolution for that dynamics. So that's the question we are interested in. So here we have to uh, go through some uh, definitions from for the infinite dimensional. Uh, at the beginning, we talk about the so-called metric. So essentially, it's a way to to introduce a Hamiltonian structure in probability space. Okay, so uh, there are some uh, necessary uh, notations we have to introduce. So essentially, you we want to map in a tangent space with a metric tensor J rho, mapping from tangent space to cotangent space. It's an invertible, invertible mapping. From uh, this metric tensor defines the so-called metric on the tangent space. Okay, in other words, given two tangent direction, you basically you consider it's kind of like a uh, inner product. If J rho is one, the other the map, you are, you are doing the classical like uh, Euclidean space or L2 space, right? If J is rho is something uh, dependent on rho, we call it a metric. Okay, so, and this is like, you can also represent it into its cotangent form, which means you consider J rho inverse and plus times phi, phi in the cotangent space, you get this phi J rho inverse phi, okay? So this is true, also true for Euclidean space, just you don't do integration to the summation, okay? Uh, let's introduce these two interesting information metrics, which are very popular in the literature. <coughs> the first one is the so-called Fisher row. Fisher row is very simple in the following sense. The metric inverse is nothing but it's a linear map. I mean, it's like it's, it's a row times phi. And this is some uh, additionally, uh, uh, normalization constant to work with. You have to make, make, make sure your space will live in probability space, which means the normalization should be one. Uh, then you write down your metric. The metric essentially is just like phi one times phi two times zero minus is uh, uh, the normalization constant. Okay, so it's one Hamiltonian structure. Now, similarly, you can work on optimal transport. <clears throat> So long, long story short, the optimal transport means the linear map here, the map here is a divergence row gradient, okay? And you work on these calculus, you get this gradient phi one, gradient phi two times, okay? So a, a very short way to understand this too, here you can think of this given row, your Hamiltonian is kind of like L2 product, right? It's like H0 norm, if you want to see this. And this is a so-called H negative one norm. And because it consider the gradient operator and Laplace operators here. <coughs> okay, so for gradient flows, you just do the uh, you know the classical approach, the J rho inverse times the first differential. You get this. This is the rho time uh, the differential of E minus six average. For the vice system saying it has average the rho times the gradient of differential of E. So here I want to talk about one more thing. So recently, you know, in our UCL group, we work on the unnormalized optimal transport. The idea is similarly, because for Fisher row, the, this thing coming from how you make thing, how you lift the row T to the unnormalized, unnormalized probability space, which is also very important in learning in the AI in itself. So they have a systematic way because you have a metric, you can add a particular eigenvalue direction to make sure things go to the unnormalized space. 
So modified, modi motivated by this logic, uh, of course, Prophet Ultra has his own uh, beautiful logic. We combine together. We also consider some normalization here working on Western space. So you, you, you see this interaction of these two areas give a lot of uh, new ideas, even for unnormalized optimal transport and unnormalized Western and green flow. So that's something else. OK. Now today, let's work on Hamiltonian flows. Let's start today with a, a classical uh, probability space. So here, uh, the so Euler-Lagrange equation here in probability space can be formulated into the following system. So actually, for any Hamiltonian structure, you can write the following. So basically, let me look at the down, downside first, then we we'll talk about the, the, the above side. It's nothing about you can see the Hamiltonian, you do this uh, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and you, instead of working on this uh, Euclidean gradient, you work on the L2 gradient. Uh, well, L2 gradient is a particular Euclidean gradient. So then, now what is the Hamiltonian here? Hamiltonian depends on metric, and the metric, for the simplest the metric is something quadratic, it's phi t, zero, inverse phi t, plus the energy function, e. And you write down details, you get this form, form you differential of phi, give you the zero inverse phi, and uh, differential on rho, give you the following form. Recall that for our information metric, our information metric has some nice, uh, nice property. Zero inverse is always very simple. Okay. So let's write down some examples. So if the, I choose the, uh, the Fisher Rao metric, my Hamiltonian is kind of a covariance matrix, phi t rho, phi t squared, rho dx minus rho phi t squared. And its differential will give you the following form. And this is, the, if I differential on rho, I get the following form, okay? So you can still think the Fisher rho type of prime two term here from rho to phi and phi is kind of like focal plan equation plus the Jacobi equation. I mean, the, the only thing here is, is the, 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 the wrong name, but essentially the only difference is that we don't have the gradient here, right? So it's kind of like a very simple Hamilton um, Jacobi equation. So sometimes you can even solve it out explicitly. Now, let's go talk about something very interesting, the western and Hamiltonian flow. The western is very, like, it's, uh, more interesting because here is greater than phi squared times rho. There are no, this additional normalization constant here, right? It's greater than phi rho squared plus the time energy. And again, you do this differential on phi, you get this average the rho gradient. Differential on rho, you get this thing plus differential of e times, uh, differential of e, differential of rho equals zero. So, if you are familiar with this fluid dynamics, this is the so-called compressible Euler equation, and you intentionally write, so I have to say this, we intentionally write into this form, is Hamiltonian structure, and this Hamiltonian structure has some uh, nice properties. So, uh, okay. Now, let's cause a, consider a third information gradient flow, so it's very, very simple, okay? We just add a linear damping here, okay? So this is the, you know, the Hamiltonian structure you have for all these kind of uh, different Hamiltonians. We just add the linear damping, which means we just add a, a linear term here. So in classical case, you have Hamiltonian structure. It is a simple structure. You add a linear damping, and then it becomes dissipative Hamiltonian structure. And it will dissipative to the, to the minimizer of E, which is give you that. And if the E, the minimizer, it's the Gibbs, it is the, Sampling point, then we go back to this sampling problem. Okay, so there are some uh, details of this algorithm, uh, which the first thing is the so called the choice of alpha t. So the choice of alpha t depends on the so called geodetic convexity of E rho, which means depending on Hamiltonian structure here, you have to define a different way to, to, to maintain you will decay at a certain rate. Okay, so there are some details. Basically, you have to, I mean, it's, it's a way. To compute the hashing operator right on, in your uh, new space, and we call it the beta positive hashing, uh, denoted by hashing beta. So in other words, just like a metric on, that, on the hashing metric, depending on your Hamiltonian structure you defined, larger equal than beta, we call it beta convexity. Okay. So if beta, if your e zero is beta is uh, is hashing beta beta larger than zero, you choose this by some constant alpha t equals constant. If it's hashing zero, you choose three over t. Okay. This is coincide with the, the result in the uh, Euclidean space. But the, the only difference is like we have to make sure 
Yeah, our new space and new metric, new Hamiltonian structure, we still have this kind of property. So let's write down some results. I mean, just copy what we have. We just, this is the Fisher Raw uh, authority information flow. This is the Fisher Raw Fox Planck and Fisher Raw Hamilton Jacobi. And you just add the alpha there. Okay. Very straightforward. And for Weiss's thing, similar thing, you do, this is the focal Planck you have. Oh, sorry, this is the, the continuation equation you have. And this is the Hamilton Jacobi function you have. You just add alpha, a linear dante. Okay, I, I have to say this this equation, I mean, this is very, very simple. And the elegant equation is not discovered by us. It's the Amir and the Meta, the, in his RCML paper, they already discovered this. So we are at least three months later than them. Okay, so. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Uh, by the way, but this is so beautiful. We want to make sure everything, at least for the the case, we want to make sure uh, the solution is uh, the it has a good property in optimization steps, and we want to work, work on general Hamiltonian structures. So the Western AIG flow introduced by Amir and Amantia in the Lagrangian format is interesting. <laughs> so this is a PDE format, right? You write down some PDEs and com coming from Hamiltonian structure, simple structure in probability space, in information metrics. Then you want to be practical. You want to compute by particle, right? So now how can we do it? Again, we recall our uh, way to derive a particle flow. So you just write dx dt equals greater than phi, and you type time d over d greater than phi equals something else. Now you can write it very simple. It's just, just you. Uh, Minus alpha t times again, it's a linear damping. It's a linear on this dxt minus the gradient of first differential of the energy. Okay, so this is the AIG flow in Western case in particle formulations. So again, I, I will say every Hamiltonian structure in probability space, you can follow this idea to write down a particular mean field evolutionary dynamics. So this is a particular initial value, mean field. I shouldn't say game, a mean field at say terms. Okay. A game means that like you have the other. If it's not symmetric, you can call it a game, but if it's symmetric, you can call it. it's gradient of something, you just call it mean field dynamic say terms. Okay? This is the dynamics. Uh, this is very abstract. Let's look at something very, very, very concrete. Let's work on Gaussian. So because you know in your sample, many problems are in Gaussian, in final dimensional. So suppose rho zero and rho star is in a Gaussian distribution, and with zero mean, and you only consider its variance. Then and my energy function will only work on the KL divergence function from rho to rho star. So in other words, your PDE here is a, is a very special. It means your initial value it is a Gaussian distribution, and your target measure is a Gaussian distribution. So in this, in this case, we can explicitly write down the PDE into ODE pairs as follows. So let's call the sigma t of the covariance matrix of your identity function. S t is like you write the phi as a quadratic function on x, and, it's, and this matrix becomes S. So basically, you re rewrite your PDE into ODE pairs, OK? So similarly, you can write the follows. This is the con discrete conti continuity equation in covariance matrix. So S is essentially the divergence of rho phi becomes this algebraic relations. More interestingly, this kind of Hamiltonian structure is can be written down the follow. It's x dot plus the hamilton jacobi equation. It's a linear damped hamilton jacobi equation. Let me call this away. So this is still a hamilton jacobi equation. But it's linear damped, a particular Hamilton Jacobi equation in this way. It is ST plus ST squared. If, if there are no this thing, it's Hamiltonian structure. Now you intentionally add alpha T, ST, coming from this PD. And this is the gradient of E, it's like uh, the gradient of creature. This is our uh, so called uh, the Western AIG flow in the Gaussian family. Okay? So it's so something is like a, very interesting because the Hamilton Jacobi equation is the topic of this uh, uh, workshop. And in general, we create a Hamilton Jacobi equation and we do a linear damping for Hamilton Jacobi equation. And, it's, and this equation, you will say, is this well defined? You can easily, because it become OD, you can prove it very easily, just like you know, from energy dissipation property, you can show this well defined and sigma is a K, now, uh, quality definite 
if the initial point is definite, so on and so forth. So later on, I, can, I, can, I will, on the other hand, I can have the numeric example I will show you. Essentially, it means if I consider this kind of dynamics, if I starting from Gaussian, I will ending at the Gaussian all the time. So if I'm consider from Gaussian uh, uh, distribution and the Gaussian family, my target is Gaussian, everything Gaussian, the AIJ flow will keep in Gaussian no matter uh, is everything still stay in Gaussian. So this is some nice properties inside this dynamics. Then we do some proof. So here the proof I would say we are something copying the the thing in the uh, Euclidean space, but we do some to observe something difference. Okay. So but this is a, a something is known in, in the literature. Like say if it's Hessian beta, then my if I choose after the two squares of beta, then my decay of energy will in that space will be capital O over e to negative square root of beta t, and uh, if it's three over t, it's like uh, one over t squared. So the, everything is very similar to continuous space. Uh, the proof actually, similarly, we can write down the Lie Apatow function using this metric, Hamiltonian structure, and uh, so on and so forth. It's, we can create, a, we can prove the damping. And it's very natural, actually. You, if you look at the proof, it's uh, uh, so, super natural to, 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 to copy what happened in Euclidean space and try to see what happened in the dentist space. But uh, there's one detail I want to say to emphasize. It's something uh, different from Euclidean, because Euclidean space, Everything is flat. Uh, since it's flat, the proof is somehow the second derivative. All this thing has become uh, easy to calculate. Now, in the in this Western space, like you know, Western-like space, for this kind of Hamiltonian, the the space is not flat, but still you can prove it. So I just want to show one properties. No, no detail, just properties. If you want more detail, you can ask my well, my student. Like uh, if you want, he's very expert in this calculations. So the one interesting property is like, when you do the dissipation of your energy, the upper function energy, when you come to a second derivative and so on and so forth, you will involve one quantity which is the follows. So you want to show this quantity is non-active. The T is the optimal map from your point to the target measure. Okay, so coming from the problem here. And essentially, you can show this is non-active coming from so-called whole decomposition. Okay, so very abstractly speaking, this kind of property means higher, this dissipation, there's some detail for this, uh, con I mean, all this constant, there's some detail to, to estimate, right? So this kind of constant, the larger the dimension you have, is simply like if you choose the gradient operator, the, uh, in the Western space, the different motion become gradient, your acceleration is uh, quicker in some sense. So that's the heuristic here. And uh, we, I mean, we address this question by, by Amir and the Meta, they assume this quantity to be zero which is only true in one dimensional space. One dimensional space is no whole decomposition, so everything is nice. But in large dimensional space, essentially, if you keep every, if you use the Western gradient flow, here you will make sure there are one quantity in dissipation of your lift function, which is should be non-negative, and, and it will improve if you use the dimension become higher and higher. Okay, there's some details uh, I will skip here. So one more thing. So I want to give you one remark. Actually, when you analysis this certain information flow, it's very interesting because it connects back to a lot of knowledge that we learn in this optimal transport and the function inequalities, all this probability stuff will come back. So what is the beta convexity here? If you look at the versus the metric, it's known as the beta displacement convexity, I think introduced by McCain. So this means, so saying you understand from green flow, you have to borrow it here to the uncertain flow. And there are a lot of details we have to carry it over if we work on a very general data function. Okay. For example, if it's, uh, in particular, for the KL divergence, if it is beta, if it's beta converse, uh, convex, uh, sorry, the KL divergence is beta convex means the Take the measure log rho star, negative log rho star, and the fx is beta strictly convex in Ukrainian space or in the underlying uh, sample space. So, in our world, our flow improves O to e to negative 2 beta t and to the O to e to negative squared beta t. Now, this is, this is very good story when beta is close to zero. Okay, there are some uh, nice connections to the gamma calculus. I think if you're interested, I'll tell you later, but this is essentially tells you, essentially you can 
So it's, it's a way to construct different, as I said, different divergent functions, different metric, which one is better? Now this is so-called gamma calculus introduced by Becker Emery in the in 1980s. This is essentially come to back to this question. But for the western thing, it's well known beta convexity is a western hash operator that equals the weak form of gamma calculus. And essentially, myself, I show like a Fisher row plus the method for the crystal simple equals the weak form of gamma calculus. So this kind of property allows us to create. So it's essentially later on when we do optimization, we want to create different divergence and different, you know beta convexity, right? This is give you a way to modify. We have a dictionary of the divergence function. So we will have a dictionary of beta gamma calculus and which is help us to design different sampling algorithms later on. Okay, so this is some theory part. Let's talk about practice because this is too abstract, right? You, we cannot compute this thing without, if it doesn't work, I mean, whatever theory doesn't make sense. So let's look at this algorithm carefully. Introduced by uh, uh, Amir and uh, um, uh, Mabel So we can say this the following dynamics is dx dt equals vt dt, dvt equals negative alpha vt minus squared fxt minus log rho xt. Okay, let's compare with the well known uh, large, uh, the damped uh, larger one dynamics, which means you have squared to dbt. dbt. So for the first thing I want to say they are different. The so difference in the following sense. This means we consider the entropy of state into the system. We are not taking a brown mood. If you write down the continuation equation here, or write down the Fock Planck equation here, you know dBT, it is the kind of like an entropy in the uh, vector space, in, so in the velocity space. So they are, we are working on different densities. And this density will keep Gaussian in Gaussian, keep all these nice properties. Now this one, again, I mean, for, uh, this one, if you are stating from Gaussian, the, st the state of Gaussian, it will leave the Gaussian. You can show that. So this is different. Now, now it's, since it's different, they bring uh, 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 some difficulty to, to numerically calculate, right? How can we really operate this kind of thing to do sampling? And all of the two dynamics that keep one uh, properties is like, in the end, my xt is according to the uh, Gibbs distribution. Okay, uh, according to the Ethernet F, the sampling, the tag di distribution. So we have designed the so-called discrete time algorithms. So this is very, very fruitful because discrete time scheme give us a lot of uh, different choices. And uh, I mean, again, we, we're still learning this. So that, so one simple way that we do the following, we do the square tau and we, we mimic something very similar from Euclidean to, to work on this out. Actually, we are learning. Actually, there are a lot of practical algorithms. We we are, we are trying to to create, uh, you know, this kind of authority the JKO to an uh, authority the practical methods to work on this problem. So I open. We just. I mean, this is not going to finish, but we just talk about uh, how we do it. So we 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 update the follows. We update x k plus one equals x k plus square root two plus the vector field. The back field is equal to alpha k v minus square root of and green f plus classic. So in the classical case, if you are updated here, you do the, just do a simple Brownian motion. But here we have to be careful since it's not Brownian motion. We are doing something like green log row, and green log row is uh, somehow we have to basically we have to to know what is x right. We have, it's a mean field system right. We have to know what is x and try to find out what is the green log. Row. So if it's everything in Gaussian, we have closed form solution. We can write down what is with the log row exactly by the following form. If it's non-Gaussian, this is a, I mean, we have to use some machine learning idea and some ideas from either numerics or machine learning, whatever, to, to, to give me a so-called density estimation. Now, one way is the so-called kernel data estimation. We also learn from the uh, Many people actually, I think the Katie Craig also he has a very nice method here. We just try to borrow them, but we still have to learn. So one way is we do this with the green log row. We do the mixed Gaussian on everything, and uh, essentially we we have a step si the, the the variance to choose, and we take gradient here, try to mimic the log. Key. Oh, two minutes. Okay, I have to quick. So to be to uh, so there are many. Okay, so there are many methods to work with. One is to, to choose the, uh, the binary ways, which means we try to model this H in a nice way. 
uh, one way is that we create a learning method. Basically, we flow a brown emotion and uh, for some other particles, and we try to learn this special edge according to this brown emotion. And then we create an MMD, which is a particular loss function, and try, we, we write a probability model, and we try to learn this edge um, during this update. So we call the brown emotion method to learn this log of density. So there are also some other adaptive restart methods, so on so forth, to make sure my, my method will decay on all the steps. So this is the algorithm, give you one minute to look at it. Essentially, we do everything the same as before. The only thing difference is like we try to learn a log row during the pass, and we do some restart technique to make sure we will decay during the update. OK, so this is very similar to the classical algorithm. The only thing difference is we add we replace brown emotion to log row, then everything is the same. And we, we find a way to update the log row according. Okay, then we do some toy example. And the first thing we compare the classical, uh, uh, we, we compare, we do log row and we do this uh, brown emotion. Uh, we, we, first we com compare things with the brown emotion with, with the gradient flow because it's very simple. And we can see, uh, this is a classical MCMC method using brown motion, the inner green flow. This is the, uh, you use the green log row to update. And this is the brown motion method that we use, okay? So there's some other people use some other method to update the log row. So this is a very classical result we know, and this is the result that people know it before, and it works very, so in the end of it, so this, sorry, this is two, uh, two layer, uh, this two part represents like two different entities. Uh, it's like a double wheel function you want to sample. So for MCMC in the end, we, it roughly ends up the solution. But for the, the heater method, there's some people, people they case before, and our method, we, we somehow stochastically we at the end, but we are very uniformly in the, at the end. Okay, this is some nice property for learning the log row. Then we do some uh, compression. So compression is here is we do an OD level. Since OD level is very fair, when we do the Gaussian distribution. So everything is Gaussian, staying Gaussian, staying Gaussian, and we do the update because then we can very fairly compare all the methods of gradient descent, AIJ flows, and you know the classical uh, on the overdamped larger dynamics. Oh, sorry, classical one is not Gaussian, not state Gaussian, so it's not fair to compare with them. Anyway, so we compare green flow is blue. So this is the KL divergence, this is iteration. We do it on a 100 dimensional matrix function. And we compare, this is the AIG flow, so it behaves very like the authority flows. Okay, it's uh, this iterative number, this is the uh, function value. So, so our flow, the AIG flow is better than green flow, similarly here for the two examples. Okay, and on particle level, similar thing happens. So this is OD level, it's super fair because we write everything in, in closed form solution in the uh, OD level. No stochastic, no nothing, just compare the decay. Here we compare in the particle level, and in particle level, again, we, the green, we are much better than green flow, than the classical MCMC method. And the, in the end, we do the so-called Bayesian logistic regression. This is a, a very typical algorithm. They, they have SVG, the, the same personal derivative, and other method create a lot of state of arts method here. We compare with state of arts directly. This is a real large dimensional example. And again, our method is uh, this accuracy, this iteration, okay? So you know the higher the better. So we with AIG, AIG here. So we are somehow the best. Uh, well, at least compared to the best, we are uh, very close. Uh, it's be much better than classical, uh, classical, you know, MCMS method. So this kind of, Applying the oxidation tricks with this flow will help us to the calculation. We also do on this CNA, uh, I mean, very, very large dimensional CNA Bayesian sampling. And also, we can see we, we are better in, in a lot of sense. Okay, that's the end of my talk. Sorry, I'm over time. So, the future work is like we want to connect more information in some structures with sampling. It's probably coming from, learn, we are learning from MIFIO games, from all this kind of interesting. Uh, Hamiltonian structures we are, I mean, are looking at. So I think there are more uh, connections between them. And also we want to work on the probability models, like neural networks and so on and so forth, because everything here is sampling is model free. It, it is very nice in itself, but in practice, we have to work on probability models 
that's the neural network, the, the, all these parameters, how can we design a similar authoritative flows? Okay, thank you for, for your attention. That's my talk. Great.